All right. So, let's see. so guys, number one thirty in chapter eight. Better see. I was looking ahead and found that. Oh, did I? We talked about this symbol, did we? All right, it's a fish. Yes, it's the fish. Um, so. When I create a confidence interval, stay with me now. If I wanted a 90% confidence interval, how would I indicate that on the picture I've drawn? What would I do? Yes. And more, can you show me in the air? What would you do? Yes. All right. So, how many tails did I just make? Two. Two. So if this is 90%, how much total area is in the tails? No, no, no. That's not total. The total area in the tails. Ten. Ten. 10%. So alpha, here's the double reason why this kicks ass. Alpha is the Greek letter A. Right. Alpha is the Greek letter A. It looks like a fish that's got tail, right? Alpha is the area, A, in the tail or tails of what you're working with. Confidence intervals always create two tails. Today we're about to get into testing claims and a claim could be I think the average grade is more than 70 and that would only care about one direction there would be one tail in that test we're going to get into that later which explains a little bit why the t-score chart has a one tail and a two tail option at the top yes no maybe um, so here alpha would be 0.10 So that's part of that question, right? Because that uh, part C on 130 wants you to identify the confidence level and the alpha. So up here, what would the confidence level be? Ninety percent. You can write it like that if you want to. So that's how those two kind of relate. Alpha is the area in the tail. The so confidence level is the area inside. I like it. Okay. This little thing right here is going to become very big very soon. All right, I like it. Anything else from homework stuff? No, are you guys doing all right? Happy Halloween. I dressed up. <laughs> One year I did, a couple years I dressed up. One year I dressed up like a little old man. They had wrinkles, gray hair, right? And so when you walk by my office, and later they're like, who was that guy in your office the other day? <laughs> um, okay, so if there's no other questions from homework, let's remember how to use this thing. So everybody's got one of these, right, the T-score chart? When do I have to use T-scores? Why were T-scores invented for when I don't know? We only know the sample standard deviation. I like it. So they were invented to cover my ass. They make the interval a little bigger to make up for if I don't know the population. I only have an estimate, the sample standard deviation. So I've got to cover my SMF for that, and that's what these do. They're always a little bigger than the Z-score would be. So they make the interval a little bigger. It's kind of makes sense. I like it. So, um, what's degrees of freedom? It's n minus one. Yeah, degrees of freedom is n minus one. We discussed why that name makes sense last time. If you missed out on that, you can watch it, or you can just ask the formula for it. So let me ask you this: If n, good job, there. if n was 51, and what do you got, Jeff? 
I want to make a 95% confidence interval. And I only know S. Two things you got to tell me about why I can do this problem. Why can I do anything with this problem? What allows me to do something, period? No. What about 51? Greater than 30. Kick ass. You with me? Maybe. So I've always got to have a normal distribution before I can use Z or T. Zort. Z or T. Which one am I going to use? Z or T? Z. I think I got. All right, a few more T's are popping up. Why do I have to use T? I only freaking know S. So don't forget, the whole reason T scores exist is for situations where I only know a, 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 an estimate of the population state. I only know S. Yes? And is that the same thing as saying like standard deviation of like X bar? No. Oh, okay. No, it's just S. What does S mean? What does S mean? Standard, standard. standard deviation of a yeah, sample. Um, so, what would the T-score be for this? Can you guys take a minute and look it up? Don't say anything out loud. So what's the degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom is 50. Which column? What's alpha in this case? What's alpha? No, no, no. What's alpha? Alpha is a fish. It's got tails. So alpha is the area in the tail. So 95%, so it's 0.05. Do you guys see that? That's it, right? And then that explains where to look on this chart. Which column am I going to look in? Area and two tails is alpha. Two. What's happening? So which which column am I going to look in? This one. Right? What's alpha? What's the area in the tails? 0.05. Right? 95% inside, 5% outside. Now, watch. If you said... What area is in one tail then? 0.025. It's the same column, isn't it? That's kind of nice. The chart's set up so that either way you look at it, you end up in the same column. Now, where am I going to stop? At 50. So I want this column, and then I just stop at 50. 2.00 now. Get gas. Yes. So, like the value? It totally has something to do with making the interval. All we're doing right now is making sure we can read this chart. So when I made an interval, a confidence interval before, didn't I have to know how to look up the z-score? Right? And then I just put it there. But we had to learn first how to use the z-score chart. So when I first gave you the chart, we focused on how the hell do you read this, and then we started using it for shit. Now I'm giving you a t-score chart. I want to make sure everybody can read it correctly. But then what would you do next? You would throw it in the same place, same formula really, right? It's just a t-score is like a z-score, it's just always a little bigger. So it covers my x for not knowing the real standard deviation. Okay, I like it. Sorry, somebody had a hand up? Yes. Yeah, degrees of freedom. For so far, for this situation in chapter 8, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. In the future, depending on the situation I'm in, mean, there might be a little bit of a different formula. 
But right now, it's n minus 1. Okay. So let me give you this. Do not worry about this side yet. Just worry about that side. Okay. We're going to do that one in a little bit. So this is just T-score practice. The last part of this you definitely need a calculator on. Just can you use the chart correctly? The second problem is do you know when to use T or Z? Or maybe nothing. Anybody else need a calculator? You're going to need one for other things in the class, too. Yes. Oh, hell no. All right. You ready? Guys, give me, give me a, just a second. This is really good. Um, this is the standard deviation of individual scores in a sample. Let me say that again. S is the spread of individual data points in a sample. The same way that sigma is that for a population. This is what? The spread for, let's remember. What does X bar mean? Sample means, that must mean that I took a sample. And this is the spread of all samples. This is the spread of individuals. This is the spread of all samples I could take. This is a spread of individuals, so there is going to actually be this. And they are both the original standard deviation divided by square root of n. So S, for like the S, X bar, will it that's like one sample that you No, no, no. S is a sample that I take, it's spread. S sub X bar would be the spread of all samples that I would take. The only reason I have to use an S here is because I only know the sample standard deviation to begin with. So fundamentally, these are for individuals, these are for groups. That's the real only difference there. So this is not the same as that can't be, because this is for individuals and this is for groups. Okay. okay. So, the general idea is anything you're not sure about, you always have to kind of penalize yourself for. So we actually use the 90 because it makes T a little bigger. Yeah. 